Day 1, Leviticus chapter 20. Our verse 6, I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to protest themselves by following them and I will cut them off from their people. The punishment for people involved in the Alcott is that God will be against them. I've said, God is saying, I'll set my face against them. Number one. Number two, I'll cut them off from the people. My guess is that you will be brought to destruction. So it means the idea of consulting spirits or getting involved in spiritism of any nature is a very, very dangerous thing you need to watch out against. And you need to understand that the scriptures are clear. That's a no-go zone. Whether you're talking about definition, these are human beings who, who say they can get the spirit world and understand what our ancestors want or don't want. Or oh, you're talking about uh, people who are spiritists who can actually uh, allow them their bodies to be used by, by the spirits. And they start talking as a spirit. Uh, similar to what happened when, when, um, when uh, just before Saul died. One of the things, the first the things he did was to go to ask somebody to bring up some of the spirit, the spirit of, uh, of a dead Tamo to talk to him. All of that is what God is saying, I'll be against such people. Day two. I think it will be important to ask ourselves, what do you mean when you talk about mediums? Wikipedia says, Mediumship is a practice of purportedly mediating communication between spirits of the dead and living human beings. Practitioners are known as mediums or spirit mediums. Of course, there are different uh, types of this mediumship. Some talk about science, tables, Others talk about trances. Others talk about Ouija boards. But all of them are, is a system or ability to actually communicate with the dead people when you are still alive. I think it's a, it's a, they are also called psychic. The only trouble is that nobody has been able to scientifically prove that there is reality in that. Some people have even tried to ascertain the validity of claims of mediumship. Um, in fact, somebody quotes the British Psychological Society doing the studies, and they came to the conclusion that the test subjects demonstrated no mediumistic ability. In other words, research shows they, they, they are just making it up. It's not real. Unfortunately, when Christianity goes down, this is what actually becomes the no more accepted thing. Day three. These spirits, yans, wager boards became real when we to call the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages. When Christianity went down, this spiritism became a big thing in the 19th century. And uh, that's when we, we see the coming of Ouija boards. And they are being used not by low class people, but by high class people, the rich. Some, of course, joke about it and they look at this as in, in uh, entertainment. But uh, even then, the people who tried to research it out admitted there was a lot of fraud. So that some of the practitioners were actually employing techniques used by magici state magicians. 
and um, once that was established, the whole thing started losing credibility. Unfortunately, has come back, especially in Africa, in a big, big way. Day three. So, where are you in your country? Is uh, this idea of trying to, to connect with the dead something that is uh, credible or not credible? Might you be becoming a participant in fraud? Because researchers say in a lot of cases well, those psychic things are fraud with cases of deception and trickery actually identified among them. And you need to understand um, that there will be different ways that they will show they were used to show that they are able to communicate with the dead spirit. And uh, sometimes they will speak in a voice similar to, to the dead person. It will be a message from the dead person to the relatives. And of course they claim that they are just hearing the message themselves and uh, repeating it. And uh, there can be all kinds of all kinds of things. Day three. And day four. You know this practice of trying to speak to the dead people is actually part of religion. With when that come happens is a religious activity, and you can see it among Vodou, uh, shamanism, spiritualism, spiritism, all kinds of Voodoo, Ubanda, New Age groups do these kind of things. The question is, can a Christian be involved? That's the verse we have read. It comes clear as a Christian, that's not something you can get involved. And it's not something you should ever try. And he is saying, I'll set my face against anyone who tries to, to connect with the dead. Let the dead remain dead. You are not to get involved in the dead. Day five. Let's read the verse again just to see what the command is. God speaking. I will set my face against anyone. So there's, it doesn't matter whether you're a pastor, a bishop, an apostle, whatever title you give it, he is saying anyone. If you become a conveyor of what the spirit world, the dead people are saying, you have set up yourself against God because he said you set his face against you. And he is saying that when you do these kinds of things, you are prostituting yourself you are supposed to be committed totally to God. But instead, you are now committing yourself like to another husband. He's calling it prostitution. For you to want to hear other spirits other than hearing God who has spoken through, through the Bible. He is calling it prostitution. When you follow spiritists, believe in them, and do the things they are telling you, and they are telling you that the, the, the dead people, in fact, they ask you, do you have an angel? Is a, an angel, in other words, there's somebody in the spirit, in the demonic world, trying to talk to you or talk to, on your behalf. The Bible is actually saying, I will cut them from their people. It means even you, the moment you go that route, rest assured that God is going to condemn you. And punish you. 
day five, rather day, day six. So, the whole issue about mediums is the same one that comes in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 11 and 12, where the Bible is saying the reason why the Canaanites were to be exterminated out of Canaan was actually this practice of trying to communicate with the dead. Now, the only unfortunate thing is it has come back in the church. You go for an average funeral and you'll see the children of the dead man actually addressing him. He died two, three weeks ago. They're saying, Papa, you remember that day you did this, you know, you did this to me. Papa, they are addressing the coffin as if the coffin is not dead. They are trying to communicate with the spirits of the dead. Now they are saying, they are therefore trying to, add, to imagine a medium. That's not an area you can go to if you have read God's word. When your father dies, anything you want to tell him, you want to tell him, it's too late to tell him. Talk to God about it. There's nothing wrong with commemorating your father, remembering the things he did, repeating the lessons you learned from his life so that others can also benefit from it. That would be a very good idea during funerals. Spend all the time, you know, remembering what God did through him, remembering the lessons his life has left with the ones that are left living. That's what the funerals are about. The funerals are not to address themselves to the dead. Day seven. It therefore means that when you are dealing with the dead, you must know they are dead. You must know that the graveyard is just full of bones, not spirits. Those issues about the spirits being around the graveside is actually part of this medium, believing that the dead are not dead. They are hovering around their graves. He said, no, you are not allowed to contact or deal with the dead. You must consider yourself as holy because the Lord is holy. And if you are to do that, then it means you will ensure that the dead remain dead. You can talk about them, but you cannot talk to them. But this whole issue is an issue about the the, the definition, the, the issue about the stars, reading the stars to direct you, is the issue about what your parents said before they died, and you think now, if you don't do it, the spirit will follow you. All, all that is connected with that idea of the, of the dead. And the word of God is saying, let the dead remain dead. If you want to do something good for them, do it before they die. When they are dead, it's too late. Remember them, commemorate them, but never address yourself to them or believe that they are actually talking to you. Or if you don't do what they told you to do, that they will do something about it. Let the dead remain dead.